All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be going through my team, the trades, and also the alternates there, and some interesting ones this week, definitely. Um, one you may not think that I was going to do, but I think it's probably going to put me in, in decent stead for the longer term rather than the actual short, short term, sort of looking towards around 13 buy. And that's the uh, the introduction of Tom Starling into the team, which you can see down in the in the interchange at the moment. So Starling comes in, and also I've decided to go with Nico Hines. And and this is sort of a, a play on on that he's going to get to play either one, six, or seven in let's say four to five of the next you know, sort of seven to eight games. And then from there we can use him use his really good scores and also his uh, his money making over that period to then be able to pick up someone you know ready for the round seventeen buy. If there happens to be an injury in any of those positions, he he gets to keep that. I suppose. You know, we like we can liken this to to guys like Harry Grant or you know Jack Bird, you and Aitken, we say Simkin kind of, um, the Josh Schuster. These kind of guys that we know are really really good players, and they're going to get an opportunity at some point. Footy is such a you know, fickle game with injuries and suspensions that you'd imagine that he you know one of those three positions has an injury, you know, a longer term one. Obviously, Paps had a bunch of you know uh, an AC joint injury, he's had a couple of head knocks, you know. Hughes and, and Munster haven't had anything until you know, Munster's gone down now. So there's a bunch of things there. And, and that's kind of the reason I've gone with Hines. And just a bit of a calculated risk with both of these guys, with Starling and Hines, to go for more go for more points uh, and also the chance to you know to have Starling turn into a keeper and, and Nico make some cash and score well over the next bunch of weeks. And the averages I'm looking for with these guys is, a, is Starling for a 50 minimum and Heinz for a 40 minimum. And I'm not expecting 70s and 60s and whatever for most of these guys because that's you know a bit a bit too far out there. But to expect some you know some decent scores in the 40s and 50s there, they'll both make over 100 k Starling could turn into a keeper. You know, if there's an injury in the halves or at fullback to Pap, then Heinz could turn into a keeper as well. Um, and, and he has that half in the wing fullback duel, which could be helpful for round 13 as well. Uh, so that's that's the thoughts there. Obviously, Starling not playing 13 is a bit of an issue, but we get two really good scores out of him this week. And you know, the confirmation with how Hodgson was going to be played when he comes back uh, was enough for me to to select him in the side. And uh, let's have a look, little bit look at the uh, the outlook. I could have not traded at all this week, but I feel like these two guys were important enough that I could bring in. And and what I'll do this week is is look for uh, the loop opportunity. I have 18 playing, so Alvaro is in there. He could actually score decently this week, and I'll be looking to to use him uh, and also Laurie Roger as kind of my my guys to to possibly try and loop. Um, and for and for you to have a look little look at who's playing early. So we have um, we have the Tigers playing early, and what I could do there is to pop you know Nico in the starting side, have Dane Laurie for example sitting at number five, and if we like his score, if you know if he gets a thirty, we can leave him out. If he gets a sixty odd, like he got a bunch of weeks ago, then we can, um, you know, we can bring one of these guys in terms of a, a Spencer, for example, uh, who plays later in the week. As you know, he's not even in, the, in this first page, so he could he could just come straight into like a number four, and we take uh, we take Laurie's score, or if we don't like it, we just we just go with it and we take Alvaro, uh, hopefully with some more minutes and stuff like that. So I think that's the that's going to be the theory with the team, and I'm I'm really liking where I'm at in terms of my cover in all positions. I do have, I do now have five wing fullbacks. I have what, four halves in there, four halves, yeah, uh, four halves with Fogs and Hines is like the, the dual position. I have a you know a mid a mid cover which is good. I did trade out Welch. That's the other thing I, I didn't say. So Welch goes out and so does uh, Simkin, which I don't think is going to get back into the side. Welch I was going to be trading out in the next few weeks anyway. And when he's kind of scoring that, you know, you look at his last four and it's just been you know, high of forty nine, a low of you know, high 30s to, to 43 in last game. So um, that's kind of the thoughts. Obviously, a really, really strong interchange there uh, with with the chance to loop as well. Um, you know, hoping for bigger scores from Lucy Leilua this week. Um, some solid scores, again, from Opacek and Manu. I'd be okay if they scored the same there. Uh, and, and some stronger scores from, from Laurie and or Roger would be ideal, but it'll be interesting to see how they, um, how they end up playing Roger this week, if he ends up at the fullback position long-term or or if he doesn't. And... I suppose the the theory here with with keeping Pap was that he's a season long keeper. If I'm going to make these trades this week and actually use a couple and get someone like Starling and Nico, then I've, I think I've got to hold Pap for for the long term, and and so I don't have to bother trying to get him back in later in the year when when he's dominating. So 
that's kind of the theory with with my team this week. Let me know what you guys think around that. Um, I'm really happy with how it's looking, and and I feel like with those trades this week, I'm gonna I'm gonna see a bump in my score, a bump in my scoring this week, and hopefully get me back into the top thousand. I think it leaves me with nine to ten players for the buy rounds, and if I could probably use say four more trades over the next bunch of weeks to to get sort of thirteen to fourteen players. And that would leave me with 16 after, you know, heading into round 14. Maybe use a couple in round 14 and, and try to hold steady for the middle part there. Use a bunch more in round 17 or round 16, 17 to get me about 10 left. Uh, and then maybe two to, you know, two two to four over the next couple of weeks and leave me with six for sort of the last seven rounds. I think that that's pretty solid. And, you know, that, that makes me feel better about making this trade in of Starling, for example. So, yeah, let me know what you guys' thoughts are. We... Got, we uh, and actually, the other thing I should say was that it left me with 0k remaining when I, I was like, oh, I mean, let's see if I can do Heinz. So I did Heinz for Welch, and I was like, what kind of cash I got left? And I literally had 528, and I was scrolling down. I was like, who's 528? Starling, straight on 528. So that was pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, we move on to the alternatives, and they're obviously in a bit of a shit heap at the moment. No Cleary has been a killer. Uh, this week, I've decided to bring in... I tried decided to trade out Pap. So I went the opposite in the alternatives, as I should be doing, uh, as like the... You know, Work it, the work it out, make make it up as you go, team. Doing the opposite to what my my team's doing, and you know held Pap in that one, so I'm gonna trade out Pap, and I've held for feeder in this one. So Pap's out. Isaiah Papali comes in at a nice price there. So I yeah, there wasn't really anyone clear that I could could pop in. I could go a little bit cheaper in, in a Luke Thompson or a Madison or something like that. But I was like, let's go Pap um, and see how he goes. And then I had to bring in um, Jack Bird. So uh, I can't remember who come who came out for Jack Bird, but I needed someone to cover for Peachy. And Bird's going to be that man. I've been speaking about him a lot, so I thought he'd be a he'd be a smart one to come in there. In terms of this one, I had to make two trades, otherwise I wouldn't have had 17 on the park. Holding Peachy and Fafita, you know, Fafita will be back next week. Peachy in round 13, which will be good. Um, yeah, the makeup of the team's pretty solid right now. It's just the fact that I'm playing Gamble uh, and also don't have Cleary. It's probably the, the two main issues with with Twali not scoring as well. So to be fair, there's not there's there's a fair few issues in this squad, but. Um, that's where we're at, at the moment. I'm thinking about just going with Braley as captain again up against the Cowboys tonight. Probably just a, a fairly safe option there. Good to see Teddy scored well last week. Avrilo's doing his thing. Moses is a man there. With man, the centers is a bit interesting, but yeah, that's how it goes. So yeah, let me know what you guys' uh, thoughts are on the alternates and, and you know, where they should be going ahead from here. Only difference with this team is I have a lot more origin, uh, a lot more players ready for round 13. So Braley, Watson, Twile is three. Hangai four, Moses five and six for man, Bird seven, Laurie and Toa, we'll say eight and nine, pending origin. Uh, and then you've got 10 for McCulloch, 11 for Gamble if he's still on the team by then, uh, 12 for Papali'i, Peachy 13. So pretty cool uh, with the amount of players and maybe a Spencer in, in, in round 13 as well. So we won't count him at the moment, but sitting with 13, so I won't have to make too many trades for origin over the next few weeks. And yeah, it might be interesting if I can try and pick up Cleary in like 14 or something like that. So hopefully a few of the guys make some cash and we can do a big downgrade upgrade with, with a few of the guys. So we'll work that out um, when we get closer to it. But there you go. They're the two teams for the week. My team, obviously, I'm looking for a real big progression this week. And, and the alternates is kind of fixing up a bit of the mess. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think of this one. Please hit like and subscribe, guys, if you are enjoying these. I really appreciate it, and we'll catch you in the next one when we talk about the people score, which has a few issues at the moment with actually trying to work out who we're going to trade in. So as I said, hope you enjoy this. We'll catch you in the next one, guys.